we are clearly in the presence of music royalty. Oh, you're very kind. Thank and you. I, don't, I don't take that lightly. Um, I'm 63 years old and um, there is no question that Earth, Wind and Fire changed the musical landscape of R&B pop records, no question. I remember when I was 63. Okay, now. <laughs> That's great, because I don't remember what I had for lunch today. Um, but just, I just want to bring everybody up to speed just on a couple of things that I found really interesting before this call. Just a couple of fun facts that um, are in incredibly impressive. Um, Earth, Wind & Fire will be 50 years old next year. Uh, I believe you guys have recorded 24 albums. You have eight Grammys. You've won four American Music Awards. You've been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You have a star in Hollywood's Walk of Fame, Hollywood's Rock Walk of Fame. You've won the NAACP Image Award, the ASCAP Rhythm and Soul Heritage Award, the BET Lifetime Achievement Award, the Soul Train Legend Award, the NARA Signature Governor's Award, the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, and uh, incredibly impressive, Earth, Wind and Fire is the first R&B group to be um, recognized by the Kennedy Center Honors, which happened in 2019. So um, I am personally blown away by your presence. Um, uh, also, as I mentioned on the beginning of this call, uh, you know, artists that we all know and love, artists that the DJs on this call have played, that mixers on this call have mixed, that radio programmers have played on the air. If an artist or, or, or uh, an act in their lifetime have two or three immediately recognizable songs, that's a lot. Earth, Wind and Fire has 12 immediately identifiable songs within the first seconds of listening. Oh, and you say, Brad, but what are they? So funny you ask. <laughs> Let me share that with you. Those songs include After the Love is Gone in 1979, Boogie Wonderland in 1979, Fantasy in 1977, Can't Hide Love in 75, Get Away in 76, Reasons in 1975, Serpentine Fire in 1977, Shining Star 1975, <laughs> Sing a Song in 75, That's the Way of the World in 1975, and oh wait, one more, and how appropriate, September in 1978. September is 42 years old this year. Wow. And uh, apparently it's a rather successful month for you guys. So I think you have a career here. If I were you, I would hang in there. <laughs> I think you can do it. Stay with it. <laughs> Stay with the program. Okay. Right? Okay. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to keep rehearsing, that's for sure. Okay, cool. And by the way, when you <laughs> rehearse, I don't think they pay you to rehearse. I'm just, I don't think they do. <laughs> but that'll, that'll be something you'll know. So talking about September, um, you know, we were very, very fortunate. Uh, Sony Legacy uh, contacted our company and they asked us, you know, about our interest in, in remixing September, which for me is, you know, what a gift. Um, and um, fortunately, Eric Cupper was available to remix the record. Uh, we think he did an incredible job. I believe that those remixes are commercially available today, which is why we did the call for today. And so, um, and, and, and either three of you guys can jump in if you want. My first question is, so every artist in their lifetime hopes to achieve the kind of success you guys have achieved. Obviously, most unfortunately don't. So when did you guys as young men realize this act is more than a musical group. This act can become an empire. Really? No. Really. Is it really, it's really an empire? It's, it, wow. it, it, it really is an empire. Don't be humble, it doesn't work. First of all, thank you for, for um, inviting us to the, to the call. Um, uh, we've, we've had a, a wonderful uh, relationship with uh, the people as of yourself who have played our records, you know, for forever. And so we owe you, we owe you a debt of gratitude as well, because we couldn't have done, have all this success without you. Um, our, our, our music um, 
uh, as you say, is, is really standing the test of time to our, to our amazement in, in some respects, um, because, uh, you know, like Ralph says, people would hope to hear their, their songs one time, you know, and we, and we continuously have heard our music, you know, for 50, almost 50 years now. Um, still out there having fun and uh, to get back out there soon. But, um, you know, we were always in the, in the uh, mode of just trying to make the best music that we could make, that music that we would like. And as Maurice White said, um, God rest him, uh, that the music was made for the people. Um, and, um, you know, that's, that's really appropriate because everybody kind of feels that at this point as if uh, Earth, Wind & Fire's music is a part of the soundtrack of their, of their lives, you know. And so, um, but it, as far as our success and, and, and realizing, you know, the, all these things, we, we, we let you guys do that. We just uh, continue to go forward and uh, to entertain our fans and have a lot of fun. And along the way, we pick up some accolades on, on the way and that, that those are uh, to, our, to our pleasure and surprise. But it's for the people, it really is. And we're just honored that the music has been a part of making people feel good. And, and, and this music that you do um, is really a combination of, of, of it's R&B and it's, it's soul, it's funk, it's jazz. Uh, people consider September, the original versions, a disco record back in the day because the, the year it was done. It's pop, it's rock, it's Latin, it's Afro pop. Um, is it true that when Maurice co-wrote this record, that he was not convinced of the hook of Badia? I don't, I don't think that was Maurice. <laughs> No, well, well, Maurice was the one. Maurice said for that, as far as a body up, uh, as they were writing it, um, you know, they kept singing that part because they hadn't come up with words for it yet. Right. And and then um, Allie Willis, you know, after a, a while, she you know she asked Maurice, "Are we going to write lyrics on this?" He said, "You know what? If it's not broke, you know, don't fix it." But Ralph is Ralph is alluding to the fact that when. When I first heard September in the uh, in the listening session that we used to have, you know, at the studio, I was just like, no, nah, you know, I I wasn't that big of a fan of it. I, it's not that I didn't like it, but I didn't. I had no idea if you had if I had had to to to, to bet money on it, I would have lost money because I thought it was too simple. I just thought it was too simple based on all the other stuff that we had done, you know. Uh -huh. But um, I'm glad that I was wrong. <laughs> uh, Amen. Yeah, yes. yeah. I, yes. I say, Verdeen, if I can ask you, what's your favorite yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire song? You know, I have I have so many. You know, I, you know, I love Fantasy and and just a note that you know we've been doing our Zoom calls, and I'm always so happy to see Philip and uh, 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 and Ralph. I can't stop smiling. So you know, uh, but you know, the the, the songs are uh, you know they're soundtracks to our lives as well. You know. Uh, because we grew up on these songs and and we grew together and uh, and what I'm proud about it that we're still doing it together. So all of the songs, as the years go on, they all just start getting better and better and better. They're kind of like your they're kind of like your children. You love them all, you know. Except for the ones that don't do their homework. Yeah, okay. love yeah, you got to yeah. get on those. those so don't do their so homework. you guys have sold um, in excess of a hundred million records over the course of what is now 49 years. And I was, um, I, f I found it very interesting um, to know that, um, that the original name of Maurice's first band from Chicago mm -hmm. was the Salty Peppers. Right. And then he moves to Los Angeles. And for Dean, then do you follow him out there? Yeah, he said for me, I was 18 years old and, and I came out and I had $30 in my pocket. and. And I was green, and uh, I was I was really skinny, and uh, everything about me was green. My teeth were green, my hair was green, uh, <laughs> everything. But it was it was a a great journey, and I was 
like, you know, raring to go. I had never been anywhere in my life. And then shortly afterwards, about a year later, I met Philip and I met Ralph and, and, uh, and you know, it was just, it was great. It was great. It's the best journey anybody could take coming from Chicago. It uh, doesn't seem to be slowing down anytime soon. Um, interestingly enough, also, um, Peter in my office brought something up earlier today when we were talking about this call. And we wanted to talk a little bit about the imaging of Earth, Wind and Fire. Everybody knows the songs backwards and forwards. Your style was always avant-garde, as was the music. In the beginning, it was sort of this Afro funk, which I think later may have influenced uh, uh, George Clinton and Parliament Funkadelic a little bit, I'm not really sure. And the images on your album covers, they're spiritual, there are pyramids. Um, we know that Earth, Wind and Fire was named after Maurice's astrological sign uh, as, a Sag as a Sagittarian. Um, was the band responsible for the imaging of the act or did you guys hire a stylist like many do? No, Maurice actually was really uh, in charge of that because um, he really had a, a, a vision for what he wanted to see. And uh, so he, he, he definitely reached out to different people that have helped to uh, uh, just shape that whole, the whole imaging of Earth, of Earth, Wind and Fire. Was Maurice the person who introduced the kalimba to the sound? Yeah, he actually started playing that uh, instrument with the Ramsey Lewis trio before ah. he put together Earth, Wind and Fire. And uh, and introduced it to uh, to us in, in the band and and now you know now I play it. Um, Ralph, if I may, um, some of your musical idols, who are they? Oh wow, musical idols. Well, I like Janelle Monae. I like Sting. I like uh, you mm -hmm. know everything Motown. I like James Brown. Um, I like Frank Sinatra. Uh, I mean, I'm very, in terms of my taste, I'm very diverse, but I'm really a, deep in my heart, I'm really a jazz head. I love mainstream jazz. Mm. So we got to throw some some uh, Miles Davis in there mm -hmm. and some Herbie Hancock and some Keith Jarrett, you know, and some Joe Henderson, you know, mm. on and on and on, mm. you know. For Dean, if you had a choice to work with anybody that's contemporary, who would it be? Wow, just one choice? Well, we've no, no, actually, we have several. We have time. Wow, we've been able to do a lot of uh, 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 good things, you know, in the last few years, you know, work with Rabio Sadiq and things like that. And then we did the Grammys with Outkast. And, and of course, I love Janelle Monet, of course, as Ralph does. Uh, uh, you know, artists like that today, you know, uh, the nice thing about us, we have, we have been so uh, broad in our musical taste mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, you know, I think that we have an opportunity to work with a lot of different artists, you know, because we're always learning too. Earth and the Fire is like a lab. We're always learning from each other. Philip, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your charity? Sure. Um, my, our charity uh, uh, is called uh, Music is Unity. And uh, we, uh, a portion of our proceeds when Earth, Wind and Fire is on the road uh, goes to uh, organizations that are helping uh, foster youth who are aging out of the system. And uh, we would call X Down to program when we're on the road and we introduce several of foster youth um, to the touring industry, to, to our touring, the touring side of our, our family, um, bring them to the show and, and uh, let the different assets of the uh, touring uh, uh, interview them and uh, they interview them and, and show them what they're doing and stuff. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a great way to um, help these people who are in a situation by no fault of their own uh, to navigate through life, you know, with some support. Philanthropy uh, and charity is extremely important in a, in a world where uh, we desperately need support. Yeah, um, you can go, go, go to musicisunity.org to uh, find out what we're doing and get involved. And, you know. Thank you, we will do. Pete, if you can, um, if we can open up the mics for everybody. Uh, we don't want to keep it too long. I'm just gonna um, 
ask uh, the DJs that are on panel um, if they have any questions for you. Uh, we'll try to keep it uh, concise and to the point. Uh, anybody want to jump in with a, with a question for, um, for Philip uh, or Dean? Uh, I'd, I'd actually like to say um, I'm Mike from, um, from uh, Miami, Florida, and I've often compared, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire is the ultimate with the horns and, and just the instrumentation. It doesn't matter where I've played your music, uh, for what age group, everybody gets it. There's an energy and a love behind it. And, and thank you for being an inspiration for me. I'm, I sincerely mean it. I absolutely just think you guys were from heaven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to jump in? Sure. I mean, what else is there left to be said? They've done it all. But I do have one question. <clears throat> what advice would you give to young aspiring musicians who are coming into the scene today? Well, I want to keep work. Go, go ahead. Never stop working on your craft. The study of a musical instrument, whether it be an actual instrument or your voice, becomes a lifetime study. So you are constantly trying to gather new information and work on your stuff to make you even better. I just say have fun, have fun, and and do the music for 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 other people. Do do the work, do the music to make the world a better place. Oh, I got a behind the scenes question. And right? Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. Uh, enjoy the journey. Well, enjoy yours. So, can uh, what you got? Hi, my name's Mark. I want to know. Um, you, I think I have this right. So, the horn section to the band was called the Phoenix Horns, and they were part of the band, or were the Phoenix Horns their own thing. Well, the Phoenix Horns originally were friends of Maurice's in Chicago. And they were studio musicians. Um, later, when we started to when we started adding horns, more horns than just Andrew Woolfolk, who was mm -hmm. the only saxophonist. Um, they had Don Meyer and, and Lou Satterfield and um, and um, Michael Davis. And was and Tom Tom Washington their arranger, or did you guys? Yeah, Tom Tom Washington yeah. was. Yeah, the, the range a lot of yeah. different things. All right, thank you. That helped tie some. I worked with Tom Tom on a record years ago, and apparently the horn players that I didn't know were your horn players. So that just really okay. solidified uh, a question I've had for over 23 years. So thank you very much. Cool. Appreciate it. Well, guys, we're not going to keep you. We know you're busy. I just want to say on behalf of uh, all of the Billboard DJs on this call, all of the mixture radio programmers on this call, the remixes on this call, the record label's on this call. Mark Young, who's the publicist who helped us organize this call. I am mm. beyond grateful. I am in the presence of greatness and royalty. You have made my <laughs> week. Thank you so much, thank guys. And everybody in this call, thanks again for thank participating. You, we are finally grateful. Thank you, Darren. Love. Thank, thank you. you. I gotta say thank you guys for letting me remix this record, man. That was... Uh, Fantastic. A high point in my Fantastic career. It was guy. just so oh. such a play. The record mixed itself, man. You know, it's just, when you get a song like that, well, you know, well, we just, can't just wait flows. to hear it. Right so, we can't wait to hear it. Thank you guys for you. Know, it's a family affair. You know, the world, you know, needs us all. And uh, you guys have contributed, you know, so immensely to, to, to making people's lives better. So thank you for what you do. And uh, together we'll keep, you know, making people feel good. I just want to leave you with, I'm going to leave you with one question, Philip. What happened the 21st night of September? <laughs> the secret. We can't See you guys. tell you that. The the secret. Secret. Oh, thank you. Thanks. It's in the book. <laughs> That's where the body art comes in. <laughs> right. All right. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank, you. Bye -bye. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.